Coming up on today's edition of the Art Marketing Podcast, we're talking about where to get started with Facebook ads, the why, and then the how you go about it. I just got into an elevator with three artists, a painter, a photographer, and a graffiti artist. And the painter is literally just getting started. He launched his online business two weeks ago. No social media, just getting going, literally just getting going. The photographer, she is super established. She's got a huge social following. She's got some momentum, but she's really only been selling online actively for a year. And one is a graffiti artist, and he's been selling his work online for 20 years. Uh, like literally the day the internet started, he was on there. And it turns out all three of them listen to this podcast and they recognize me. Hey, Patrick, we were just having a discussion about Facebook ads and selling art online. Uh, they all told me individually, let's say, where they are in their careers. And they said, hey, being that we're in this elevator, could you kind of quickly give us your pitch on how best to approach Facebook ads? No problem, I say, no problem. The good news here is that my advice is the same for all three of you. Quick tangent, been a while since I've asked for an iTunes review of the podcast. Uh, many of you have been leaving them anyway, which I really sincerely appreciate. Thank you so much for you have. I think we're up to like 130 of them at the time of this recording, but I do want to keep growing those. And so I wanted to read one, switch things up a little bit and give a shout out. Five-star review titled Actionable Advice by Envaro. There's no fluff or filler in this podcast. The steps and playbook uh, playbooks Patrick sets out are practical, real-life strategies, one of the most useful listens I've found for my small business uh, and for selling my art. Huge thanks for that, Envaro. And I would ask, if you're getting value out of the podcast too, I would love it if you would leave an iTunes review. Super helpful. Uh, really appreciate um, all of them. Read all of them, and they get me and the staff super fired up and motivated. So that's the end of the tangent. Uh, let's get back into the elevator. Now, big surprise here, I'm gonna start with an analogy. Uh, you ever seen Casino? Uh, directed by Martin Scorsese and starring, among others, Robert De Niro. There are three ways of doing things around here. The right way, the wrong way, and the way that I do it. The right way, the wrong way, and the way I do it, as it pertains to Facebook ads. So let's define it. I'm gonna start with the wrong way. The wrong way. I would say the way 99% of artists and photographers go about it, uh, certainly the way I went about it first in my career, you sort of just swan dive into the deep end. You Google around, you learn a bit, you start running them. You immediately go after cold, i.e. it's their first time interacting with you uh, in your work type of traffic. So you go after cold traffic. You put your art or your photography up, you optimize for sales, and you throw some language along the lines of 30% off, next week only, buy now. Sadly, this way is sort of doomed uh, for a number of reasons, and these are the two biggest. First is most just don't have the perspective on how long it takes to learn Facebook ads and build up steam. So what does everybody do? Hey, I heard about these Facebook ads, Instagram ads. Seems like everybody's doing them. Seems like it's a really good idea. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to spend 150 bucks, or I'm going to spend 200 bucks, or 500 bucks, whatever it is. I'm going to spend a little bit. Let's just see what happens, and you go for it, and... You end up losing all that money. You get very little results because you sort of don't know what you're doing and you're like, ah, that's just a waste of time. I'm gonna quit. What a waste of money and you move on. And by the way, this is the exact same process happens whether it's you doing it and figuring this out or whether you hire some consultant that might know what they're doing but has really never sold art or understands how art sells online. So I've seen so many, so many people jump in that way and do it and you didn't completely waste that money, by the way. You did learn a little bit, but you just, you have to stay at it. You didn't learn enough to make cold traffic pay. It takes time. Uh, it takes a lot of money, not a lot of money, but it takes a lot of time, energy, and effort to get there. And a short spend spread over a couple of weeks or a month is not going to get you there. That's the biggest reason, I think. Second, Facebook is laden with what I lovingly call idiot taxes. They are spread all over the Facebook ads experience in a hidden fashion, like some sort of sick and twisted game. If you don't learn them and how to avoid them, then it turns out you pay them. And then, after the fact, you feel like an idiot because you didn't know. Uh, you know, idiot's a little bit of a strong word, but that's what I call them. And, you know, there are other reasons, but those two, the not having the perspective on how long it takes, and then the idiot taxes are what dooms 99% of the people out there as it pertains to cold traffic. That is the wrong way. Let's talk about the right way. 
This is the conventional wisdom way. You have a product, i.e. art. You need more buyers for your art. So what is the most direct out route? You target buyers. So you go after cold traffic and you immediately go for the sale. You're in the business to sell art. Of course you do. 99% of what is taught out there in Facebook ads land is this very route. You have a product to sell. That is what you want to achieve. You spend money on ads and you sell it. You put a dollar into the Facebook ads marketplace and you want to get out $2 or $3, let's say. Now, in this example, the right way, uh, let's just say in contrast to the wrong way, let's say that you know what you're doing. Let's say that you have the perspective. Let's say you are incredibly nimble and can deftly sidestep any and all idiot taxes that are thrown your way. Uh, this is going to go great, right? You know how long it's going to take. You're going to win. Sadly, not likely. Not likely. Why? Number of reasons here as well. Let me give you a quick few of them. And yes, I realize this is controversial to say. Yes, I realize it will likely sting a bit. Yes, I am saying for artists and photographers, 95% plus of them should not, not be running cold ads. Whew. I said it. I said it. Feels better getting that off my chest. Really believe it. Let's get to the why. Number one reason. This is the big one. This is the, this is the elephant in the room. Going after cold traffic with art. Buy my art right now, 25 by 36, giant stretch canvas. It's, it's just not how art is sold online. It's just not. People are not flipping with their thumbs on Facebook or Instagram, prepare, prepared to make an impulse on the spot buy of your art. I always use the relationship example. What is that method? That method is walking into the bar to someone you've never met and asking them to sleep with you. How often does that work out for you? Does it go well for you? No. The relationship example is how art is sold. You go into the bar. You strike up a conversation. Maybe you buy her a drink. Maybe you ask for the phone number at the end of it. Then you take her out. Then you take her out again. Then you have some trips. And then you meet her mother. And then you go to church. And then maybe that uh, momentous occasion potentially can happen. That relationship example applies to art. I think that's just how it works. To which most people would say, yeah, Patrick, whatever. Look at how many things on Facebook and Instagram that are advertised do work out that way. So, okay, let's contrast it. I started making a list when I was browsing Instagram, you know, let's just say for a week uh, uh, ahead of recording this podcast. What did I see in my Instagram feed that was advertising me that's, that's breaking the rules? I saw a bidet. I saw uh, surf trucks for my skateboard that can help me carve my skateboard like a surfboard. I can already do that. I saw a pair of pants I can spill water on, apparently, and will come right off. I saw a Yeti-style cooler for my beer bottle. Uh, not the cans, mind you. Those have been around forever, but for the beer bottle, I might actually get that thing. I saw a shirt for athletes that will make non-athletes look like athletes. I saw an iPhone cord holder for the side of my desktop. What do they all have in common that art does not? They are impulse-style purchases. You might actually be flicking your thumb up and down and decide you need this useless item and pull the trigger. That's just not how it goes with art. Those type of items are capable of achieving an ROI right out of the gates, some of them anyway, right out of the gates going after cold traffic because of the nature of the purchase. So that's the biggest one for me why artists and photographers should not be jumping right into cold ads right out of the gates. It's just not going to work. It's not how art's sold. The next one, you're just getting started. You don't have a huge list of past customers to start with or a big email list or a ton of purchases that Facebook has tracked or lots of website traffic, et cetera. So you're going to struggle with finding a winning cold audience to go after, especially if you don't have a niche uh, that's easy to target, right? So when you're just getting started out and you're going after cold traffic, you either have to give Facebook some sort of an audience that it can create a lookalike audience off of, or you have to do what's called interest targeting. So if you're an artist that doesn't have that big, healthy, good seed list to start out with, then you have to go to the interest targeting route. Well, that's really hard for a lot of artists, uh, primarily because maybe your niche is not defined. Now, if you're somebody that paints Rottweilers, yes, you could target Rottweiler lovers, and that, that might be okay. But for most, the targeting and the cold targeting especially is a big issue. You couple, with that, couple that with how art sells online and how long it takes, and it just doesn't end up working out. Next one. Your margins are not likely big enough. What are you selling? Prints? Perhaps some originals? Uh, do you have any limited editions? Do you have any high price, high price point items? Great. Chances are, though, 
your margins, coupled with how art sells online, are not likely high enough to make Facebook cold ads pay. Art is often a one-off sale. It's not like you have some sort of subscription model where you're going to make a sale off cold traffic and charge somebody $39.99 for a month and they're not going to cancel for three years. Or you know, you're know, you going to have a, an extremely high volume of purchases right out of the gates. You're going to be selling two, three, four hundred pieces a month. Or people are going to come by back and buy five and six and seven and eight and nine, ten pieces from you within a year or two years, all of which really help achieve a fantastic ROI out of cold traffic. Next reason. Your funnel is not sophisticated enough. It's just not. Now, part of this is AOV, your average order value. I've talked about that a bunch. Do you have a number of different things operating on your website to be able to increase your AOV, i.e. increase the amount of money? AOV is average order value, for, if you haven't heard. Do you have that going on so that it might increase what you're, willing, what you're you know, capable of spending to attract cold traffic? So part of it's AOV. Uh, part of it is a properly diversified catalog of offerings and price points and different items in your store. Uh, most artists don't have this. They don't have everything from the entry-level cheap type of uh, uh, um, knick-knack stuff, you know, whether it's a shirt or whether it's a calendar. I mean, the price point is really more important than the, the what it is. You know, into prints, into limited editions, into originals, into really expensive items, into group product groupings, like all of those things that you see uh, sophisticated e-commerce stores have are really important because it's going to increase your conversion rate. You're going to convert more customers, i.e. be able to pay for more cold traffic and get more ROI out of a cold traffic. Part of this is your follow-up marketing. Do you even have any? Is it automated? Does it scale? It's a huge one. Part of it is the sophistication of your warm audience targeting and remarketing. If I come to your site and I view a product and I leave, are your ads going to follow me around the internet all day? Also a huge one for how you're gonna get an ROI out of cold traffic. Part of this is the consistency in your marketing. If your cold traffic is running, you cannot afford to fall off the marketing bandwagon for three months. That never works. You have to have constant new stuff getting my attention, bringing me back to the site. Now, all of this, totally A-okay. 99% of cases, artists are solopreneurs. They don't have a staff of digital experts that are helping them build out this type of sophisticated e-commerce operation, and that's totally okay. It's where you get started. And I think the best analogy to some things up here is the fishing one. The fishing expedition is cold traffic. That's what it is. You and I, we're both renting a boat. We're paying for the gas, the food. We're hiring a captain, and we're steaming off to the fishing grounds. That is paying for cold traffic. The difference between my boat and your boat is that you're set up and rigged to go after swordfish. You have the rods, bait, tackle, harpoons to catch that wonderful, beautiful fish. I do too. But in addition to the swordfish, I also have gear to catch tuna and marlin and mahi-mahi. And I have bottom fishing gear to go after rockfish. And I can catch squid. I've got the nets. I've got nets. I've got crab pots and lobster pots. And so what ends up happening is we both go after cold traffic because I know what I'm doing. And I have a sophisticated marketing funnel and everything is set up correctly. I'm going to come back loaded up with seafood and you're gonna come back, maybe you caught a swordfish, maybe you didn't, the ocean's a big place, you might miss. And so that's a, really a great analogy that sums up how prepared you have to be to be able to go after cold traffic and really truly make it pay. Now, are some of these generalizations? Sure, but I stand by the fact that starting with cold in either the wrong way or the right way, you're setting yourself up for failure. And, and, and don't misunderstand, you can make it the wrong way or the right way but the number of artists or photographers out there who do is really, really small. And they all have some sort of unique circumstances to them that are allowing them uh, to, to, to be able to do that with cold traffic. So let's get to my way. We covered the wrong way, we covered the right way. Let's get to my way. And uh, there's a lot to unpack here. Big picture, succinctly, why this works, and then let me get more into the tactical. And you know, it, it should be noted that my way bucks the conventional wisdom out there. Most don't teach this to start. Um, most of the courses you see, or the webinars, or buy my guide, or take my class, whatever it is, nobody, nobody teaches this to start. Um, but I am not most. I, I think it's where you start, it's the most important. Succinctly, again, starts with a piece of content. It can be as simple as an email or a blog post. 
important part here is that it is not a hardcore sales pitch, has no sales language in it whatsoever. If there is, it's extremely subtle. You email that to your list. You create an organic Facebook post. You turn that post into an ad. That ad has a daily budget. You show Facebook and Instagram for your audience. You pick warm traffic, not cold, warm traffic, i.e. people that have interacted with your brand before. The best way to think of it is people that have met you. It's not, it's not the first time you've met them. The big picture goal is to capture attention in the form of new email subscribers, website traffic, social followers. You do that consistently all year long. Really important part, so I'm gonna say that again. You do this consistently all year long. When it does come time for the sales, you hammer this audience with ads that are asking for the sale, and that's it. That's what I believe to be the effective way to sell art online and off with Facebook and Instagram ads. Best part of this thing though, easy to set up. Once you do, really easy to execute on week in, week out. Let's talk about why it works. Number one, it's how art is best sold online. You build attention all year long. When the time is right, you ask the attention for a sale. You rinse and repeat year after year after year. By starting with warm traffic this way, it forces you to learn how Facebook ads work and get the hang of things before you even contemplate going after cold. In order for this strategy to work, it forces you to create non-salesy content all year long. That is a big one. That is the karate kid. You are Daniel, son, and this process is Mr. Miyagi. You think Mr. Miyagi is literally turning you into an indentured servant with this paint the fence and wax on, wax off business. Paint the, paint the fence and wax on, wax off business. So that process, once you get going, once you start doing it, it frustrates you. So what do you do? You know, your, your, arms, your arms are aching. You get up and you start talking a little trash to Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi gets into his, his attack formation. Show me paint the fence, Daniel, son. Uh, show me wax on, wax off. And then what are you doing? You're doing it. And Mr. Miyagi says, it's, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's. And all of a sudden, you're blocking all these things. All of a sudden, you know how to fight. What's happened is as a result of this process, you didn't really know it was going to happen, but you're all of a sudden now an effective art marketer. Week in and week out, you're creating new non-salesy content. And guess what? That's teaching you how to fight. That's teaching you how to market. Incredibly powerful. So doing things this way, uh, it forces you to learn and it forces you to stay consistent, which is the key. So let me just say, if you can't excite, motivate, and keep the attention of the warm traffic, you are never going to be able to do that with cold. So you start with warm. Uh, you're never going to make it with cold if you don't already have a system in place, i.e. this system to properly convert the cold traffic that you're bringing to your site all year long. You're out doing shows. Uh, you're out having, having gallery shows. Uh, you're, you're emailing your list. You're posting stuff on Facebook. You're posting stuff on Instagram. So what's going to happen? You're going to drive traffic to your website. What's going to happen after they leave your website? Are you going to have ads showing on Facebook and Instagram that are going to bring them back in a non-salesy way? If you don't, your goose is cooked. You have to have that. That is such an essential part of, of any type of a traffic spend, and especially as it pertains to cold. So what this does is this system forces you to get it into place. Not only is it always running, not only does it include anyone new that comes to your website, but it's consistent and it's always changing week in, week out. So you need this system. This system creates the demand that will turn your sales from where they have been into some serious revenue opportunities for you. And we see that again and again. This system will speed the creation of your lists, your website visitors, people that have opted into your email list, and yes, customers too. So once you are ready, if ever, you can start going after cold traffic. And you know, attention is really hard to get, really hard to keep. I say that all the time. If you're gonna invest the time, the energy, the effort, the creativity to create some content, you need people to see it. Email alone is not gonna get this done. Nobody's opening it. So this solves for it. And lastly, I would say, Momentum is a big deal. It's a big deal. How many artists do I talk to that they go on a sprint and they market so hard for three months and then they just get, they lose their energy, they crash, they hit the wall, they go dark. No, that kills you. It kills all your momentum. Stick to this process. It will create momentum. It'll start giving you some wins. The wins will start stacking and it's really gonna keep you motivated. Now, before we get more into the tactical, we absolutely have to talk about the chicken and the egg situation. Let's say you're like that first person just getting into the elevator. You're just getting started. You just launched your website. You just launched all your social profiles. You're really just day one marketing your art. 
in order for this system to work that I'm advocating, you know, we're going to go after warm traffic. So it stands to reason you need to have a warm audience. If you don't have one that's big enough, Facebook won't be able to show them any ads and you won't get any traction. So we have a chicken and egg situation. So if this is you, you're in this boat, what do you do? There's, there's, there's an answer here. You start with contests. You start with contests. Covered this on the podcast before. Whether you do them with Messenger, which is pretty technical, it's a hard way to start, or whether you do them conventionally, by which I mean forget the, the Messenger add-on and instead run them on your website, use email um, if, you, if you, you do them that way. Anyway, either way, there exists no greater art marketing technique tactic out there that can quickly build your list and build your audiences in the contest. I just don't even think it's close. We have artists that start with zero emails on their list and zero social following after one contest. Their email list can swell to 100, 200, 300, 400. They run three or four of them. The next thing you know, they have a couple thousand people on their email list, maybe 500 to 1,000 followers on either of their social platforms, and you're in business. You're rocking. You're doing way better than most artists already. So the contest is the way to go about it. I will put in the show notes the podcast episodes resources that we have on how to do that on Messenger. We are going to do some additional content on how to do it without Messenger, uh, the, the conventional way. But that is, that is where you get started. If, you're no, if you don't have a warm traffic at all or any warm audience that you're capable of building, you start here and it will get you there very quickly. You can go ahead and stop this episode now. Go move on to the contest and we'll see you when you have a warm audience to target. Now let's pivot to the tactical. And you know this, is, this has been an interesting area for us because you know, one of the things that we've, we've pivoted to at Art Storefronts, it's like, you know, early part of the company, oh, we're selling this awesome website software. Uh, later stages of the company where we are now, it turns out uh, if you don't have successful customers, the software is not enough. So you better get really, really good at teaching marketing. So we've been spending a lot of time, energy, and effort. This podcast is part of it on teaching artists and photographers how to market. And in sort of that process, one of the things that we've been throwing in there is talking to customers at every stage of the game early on, uh, sophisticated in between on what's working with their education and what's not. And kind of the big takeaway that I've had from a number of those conversations is we do tend to throw the kitchen sink at you. A lot of advanced stuff, a lot of advanced stuff that can be extremely intimidating if you're just getting started. You're, 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 you're just dipping a toe in the water and we're throwing you in the deep end, you know, upside down, carrying a 10 pound weight. And so one of the things that we're sort of pivoting to is Splitting our education, splitting our teaching into the bare minimum, just get quick start guide, I mean, bare minimum, quick start guide, whatever you want to call it, the bare minimum amount of tasks that you need to do to be able to properly execute this tactic. Do that a couple of times, start feeling good about it, take the training wheels off, and then you can get into the advanced stuff, adding them one at a time. And so we're really sort of informing those learnings, those teachings back into you know our overall marketing product. And so... What I'd like to do you know, already on this one is talk about the bare minimum, what it takes to get the bare minimum tactic in the water. Uh, so we're going to start there, and then we can get into the advanced after the fact and sort of layer on the advanced uh, tactics after the bare minimum. Um, okay, so hear me out on this, and you can listen. There's no need to take notes or worry about the particulars. As I have something for you at the end that will take care of that. So for now, you can just listen. Yes, I am fully aware that the Facebook ads interface is clunky and buggy and new and annoying and not particularly beautiful. Don't worry about any of that. I'll start you out at the end of this thing. Where I want to start, bare minimum, is the audience. The audience, in this case, the warm audience that we're going to ask Facebook to show our ads to. And when you run this technique, we are going to be running what I like to call the kitchen sink audience. Everything goes into it. So you combine every warm audience you have together into one audience, a.k.a., uh, fingers at air quotes, the kitchen sink audience. You start with your email list, however many are on it. It doesn't matter. You include all applicable information you have, first name, last name, city, state, zip, country, LTV if you have it. We'll get more into that later. You take that list, you get it in a spreadsheet, you upload it to Facebook. Facebook matches it to profiles on, on, on Facebook that you can now show ads to on Facebook and Instagram. So you start there. Next, you add in the website traffic. These are people that have visited your website. Facebook has created an audience. You set some parameters. That's audience number two. You add in anybody that has interacted with your Facebook page, your videos, your Instagram profile. 
So those are engagement type of audiences. Those become word audiences. If you're on Messenger, you add in your Messenger subscribers. Everything you have, all of these audiences, gets combined and becomes your warm audience, the kitchen sink audience. That's the audience. Let's talk about the conversion objective. Now, this one needs to be adjusted to taste, depending on your audience size and how much traffic you are going to be driving. So you might have to play around with this one for a little bit, test this one a little bit to get the best results. Now, Facebook, of which the, the structure is you have a campaign, you have an ad set, and you have an ad. For each ad set, Facebook really wants you to get 50 conversions per week in order for it to work out its algorithmic magic, let's just say. You're not likely to get 50 sales a week, so that one is out. So you have some options that you can start with. These are the two that I recommend everybody start with. Ideally, you have email capture on your site, and so you want to set your objective to email subscribers. If that's not you, I would set, I would set the, the objective to traffic, which are just going to be clicks to your website. But let's discuss sort of a funnel quickly and define a funnel quickly. Um, you run an ad. You get engagement on your post. Comments, likes, shares, clicks. People come to your website. They stay on your website for longer than 10 seconds. They potentially opt into your email list. They potentially hit a product page. That is the page on your website where the art is for sale. Um, they potentially add that product to their cart. They check out. So let's say that's a funnel. Each of those steps is a potential conversion objective in Facebook. So you can tell Facebook you want engagement. I want people, to, I want people that comment and like and share and click my posts. Uh, you can say, I want a 10-second visitor. You can say, I want an email address. You can say, I want people to view products. You want people to add to cart or you want sales. So again, ideally in this situation, I think you start out going for email addresses. If you find that to be ineffective, you go one step up the funnel to traffic. Sadly, there is no one uh, golden rule, one catch-all for everyone and, and everyone w w where they are and what type of art they sell in their career. So that's the best advice that I can give. There's no one size fits all. So that's a conversion objective. Let's talk about the placements. The placements are the properties that Facebook owns that you can show ads on. Given this is the bare minimum quick start guide, you just choose all placements and you let Facebook take care of the rest. Uh, remember, this is just the bare minimum to get started. The content. Now, for the content, we want to make sure it's just content or mostly content with no salesy language, right? No sales language. That's the key to this whole thing. Tell a story. Do a time lapse. Uh, give a news update. Show your latest work. Tease an upcoming show. Uh, show yourself being interesting. It doesn't matter. Whatever. It's all good. As long as it's content and you're not asking for a sale, it will do. Now, ideally, this is a post that lives on your website, so you have somewhere to drive the traffic to. Um, and that could be on your regular site or it can be on a blog if you have it. Uh, you know, if it's in an email, it can be just an email and you drive to that link. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you're going to mix this up throughout the year anyway. Let's leave that to people, the content. Let's talk about the spend. Five to $10 a day gets this done. You can start at $5 a day and work your way up to $10 a day. Uh, perhaps or things are going well for you, you can keep dumping the budget. So you can do this extremely ineffective. It's not about this big daily spend. It's about a small spend spread out throughout the year and the consistency, which is literally the whole ballgame. And not just doing this consistently, but also mentally spending the money and planning for that. You know, where did I start? Why most artists fail? You're right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give I'm going to give 150 or 250 or 350 or 500 or 1,000, and I'm just going to throw that at Facebook and see what it does. You never know. It might work out. No, that's just the wrong way to approach it. You are going to fail if you have that mindset. If, however, you shift and you say, you know what? I'm going to do this 52 weeks this year. I'm going to spend $5 a day. I can commit to $35 a week. And you say, that money is spent. And it's not even spent. It's invested. That money is invested in my business. But getting your mind in a place where you say, that's happening. I'm investing that money. It's gone already. It's already, it's already invested in, in, into my art career. That is such a key place to go. Because then, then you're in, you're brought in, you're, you, you have a perspective of how long it's going to take. You're not going to quit. Your expectations are set correctly. That part is so huge. And I would say a good cadence or a clip for this is you want to do this once a week, every week, all year long. Once a week, you switch up the content. Content, 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 content. Time for a sale, switch to sale, exact same system. Content, 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 content. You start next week, rinse and repeat all year long. 
That's it. That's the bare minimum. You find that after you've done this for a few weeks, you're going to start getting the hang of it. You're able to execute on this really easy. The rhythm and the pace works. You're looking at the data. It's starting to perform. You're starting to get a little momentum. You're getting traffic and email signups bit by bit. Slowly but steady, you're growing your audience. Uh, that's the attention that you both rent and own. So that's the ball game for the bare minimum. And it really is pretty easy to get set up once you get going. It has all of the above mentioned features. It's going to force you to start creating this content. It's going to force you to create non-salesy content. It's going to force you to actively engage in marketing week in and week out. That alone is going to be a tremendous win given how small the spend is, $35, $35 a week, $70 a week. If, you're, if you have a much bigger audience, you can do that. You're spending that money elsewhere and things that are not providing for your business. You can absolutely do it. That's the bare minimum. Let's pivot now to the advanced section. Now, a few episodes back, I recorded a podcast on omni-channel marketing. Again, it's going to be in the show notes. If you haven't heard it, I highly recommend you listen to that one. I'm going to build on it here because this entire technique that I'm advocating, it works incredibly well in the bare minimum fashion that I just outlined. But let me tell you, when you bolt in omni-channel marketing, whoo, it's cooking with gas. It's absolutely cooking with gas. We take our weekly piece of content, we omni-channel market it, and we pour gas in the form of Facebook and Instagram ads on the fire. Now, you know, there's a, a rather large number of creative variations you can do on this, especially when you bolt in the omni-channel marketing. So there's just a ton of room to explore the space, as it were. So let me explain, you know, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about, and then you can adjust yours to taste and, you know, sort of what you have at your disposal. So let me just run through a sort of quick example. I have my content in form of a blog post or something on my website. I email my list. I create an organic Facebook post. In addition, I also create an organic Instagram post and an Instagram story. I'm also using Messenger, so I'm gonna blast my Messenger subscribers. I'm gonna stagger the release of that, but I'm doing all of those. I'm going to change the hello bar or announcement bar, the little bar at the top of my website to link to this piece of content. Then I'm gonna get into my ads. I'm gonna roll with more or less the exact same setup as I did in the bare minimum example, except I'm gonna split Facebook and Instagram. I'm gonna create an ad for Facebook. I'm gonna create an ad formatted specifically for the Instagram feed. I'm gonna create an Instagram story ad. Perhaps halfway through the week, I'm gonna send an additional email to the folks that did not open that email. Hey, I see why am I, in case you missed it. I might even do another Facebook post, a video this time, before I did a link post. This is a video, and then post it to my page and turn it into both a Facebook and Instagram ad. So I'm running at $5 a day with my original link post ads, and then I'm gonna switch it up to a video ad. Midweek, same $5 a day. So now my week is done, and I've hammered every channel I have at my disposal, plus spent my five to $10 a day on ads. My content got a ton of attention. I dropped a bunch of new email addresses, got some messages from prospective customers, and grew my attention, both rented and owned. That is cooking with gas. That is effective marketing. That is how you get attention. That is something that 95 to 99% of artists out there are not doing on a regular, consistent basis, i.e. huge opportunity if you do. You do that all year long, and your business will grow, and your sales, when you have them, will do way better than you ever imagined possible. Let's get into some good news. We talk about some good news. I love good news. Good news here is you can take this whole process, step at a time, start with the bare minimum, get comfortable with it, things get easier, and then you just start adding one additional task each time you do it. You do the bare minimum, next time you add in one Instagram story ad. You do the bare minimum, then you can add in the messenger broadcast in one Instagram story, and you just keep leveling it up, and you get better, and you get better, and you get better. Oh, by the way, guess what process you're going to use when you do run a sale? This exact process. That's in all caps. Think the Miyagi and Daniel Sun example all over again, right? So I got the hang of this warm traffic, omni-channel marketing thing. Now, how do I do the sale? Show me wax on, wax off then. You know, when you run the sale, it's the exact same process. The only thing that changes is the language of the content. It goes from non-salesy to salesy. That's it. That's it. So you already know how to fight. You already know how to fight, Danielson. You now know how to market. So when you actually switch this from just normal non-salesy content to sales, boom, you're just on it. So there you are. Let's talk about cold. 
what happens as a result of this process is if you start to build an audience and you're getting traffic to your website and you're building email subscribers, you're building purchases, um, all of which you can leverage to build targeted lookalike audiences to start going after cold when you're ready. Or guess what? Don't ever go after cold. You can run this process all year long and it's insanely effective. Uh, you're just not relying, it, not relying on it to create new cold traffic. Now, with this, well, I guess you, you technically are because what happens is, is you're running this, it's effective, it's non-salesy, people share it, uh, uh, people send it to their friends, people leave comments, other people see the comments, they come, they click, so it does generate and drive cold traffic. I should mention that anyway. Um, with this process in place, you are now a way, way more sophisticated marketer across the board and you have a system in place to capture all of the attention you're building all year long and you will be continuing to nurture them all year long. And you're not doing that right now. No one is. You know, your warm audience gets updated on its own by Facebook. So let's say that we put this into practice. We get this in the water today. I come to your website next week. Guess what happens? I'm now in your warm audience. Every week, I'm going to see different content from you all year long, all the way leading up to the sale. Boom, the sale. You've got me. Perhaps better still, um, you know, of all of this, the good news, I am not going to leave you hanging with just an explanation on this one, with just a podcast, with just some audio. No. I'm going to show you how to do this step-by-step, -step. in-depth video by in-depth tutorial video. I'm going to start with the bare minimum. I'm going to use a real artist, his real content, his real ads account, and run the whole thing from start to finish. Actually, I've already done this. It's already all running. So I have a pretty much the ultimate guide to running warm traffic for artists and photographers. I talk about every single solitary bit. I show you every single solitary bit of content. I show you the web page, the email, the Facebook post. We then move into videos. I show you how to set up the audiences. I show you how to combine the audiences. I show you how to create the ad groups, the campaigns. I show you how to sidestep the idiot taxes. The entire thing, start to finish. And I didn't make one boring long video either. So they're individual short videos because I wanna make this as quick, as easy, uh, 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 as carefree to be able to go through and not get stuck on anything. So I think it's like eight or nine or maybe 10 videos that walk you through every single solitary step. I've got some bonus stuff in these videos that I didn't even mention in here about some additional ways to create some audiences. So it's extremely thorough. It is something that a lot of people would charge two payments of $99.99 for. I'm not charging anything. I want you to take this and run. My hope, my sincere hope is that anyone that is contemplating and or currently running Facebook ads stops what they're doing, watches this, realizes it totally works. We've got a ton of experience on this and go through this thing and it's not gonna cost you a dime. How do you get it? Um, of course, we're gonna move the attention around. Links anywhere you're watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, there'll be a link. If you're watching this on the website, there'll be a link. There'll be a link in the show notes, although the show notes are a little bit buggy. So you might just have to come to the website, search the Art Marketing Podcast, however you get there. You know how to get there. There will be a link to the ultimate guide to running Facebook ads and warm traffic. I want you to get it. I want you to watch it. I'm probably going to throw a chat box on it. If anything confuses you in there or, or, or you're stumbling on something or something is not clear, you could even send me a message in the chat window and I'll answer it. So run this. Get going. Don't worry about it. Mentally spend the $5 a day in your mind. For many of you, it won't even spend the full $5 a day. Get this learning in this system. We'll have some follow-up material. Get this going. Run this all year long. Your art business will grow. You will get momentum. The consistency will breathe success. The small wins will start going into big wins. The velvet ropes will part, and you'll be at the front of the VIP line. None, none of that's going to happen. But your business will grow. Your business will grow. You will become a more sophisticated marketer and things will really start working out. So on that note, thanks always as listening, as listening. Thanks always for listening and have a great day.